Welcome to GMAT Math Online Math Prep Videos. In this GMAT Math Online video, we continue our discussion of algebraic expressions. We start with simplifying expressions containing radicals. Expressions containing square roots, or radicals, occur often and should be simplified where possible. As an example, look at this expression. 9 times the square root of 50 plus the square root of 18. This expression contains the square roots of two numbers that don't look related, and therefore can't be combined as they stand. But if we take the prime factorization of each of the numbers, 50 and 18, we get 9 times the square root of 2 times 5 squared, plus the square root of 2 times 3 squared, which shows that each of these equals 2 times a number that is a square. Taking the square root of these two squares, we get 9 times 5 times the square root of 2 plus 3 times the square root of 2, which finally results in 48 times the square root of 2. And this is much simpler than the original. Often, a square root is in the denominator of a fractional expression, and the expression is simplified by removing the root from the denominator without changing the value of the expression. This is called rationalizing the denominator, because the denominator is now a rational number. Here are two examples. 48 over the square root of 2 equals 48 over the square root of 2 times the square root of 2 over the square root of 2, which equals 48 times the square root of 2 over the square root of 2 times the square root of 2 and that equals 48 times the square root of 2 over 2. Notice how the original fraction, 48 over the square root of 2, was multiplied by 1 in the form of the square root of 2 over the square root of 2. Then when we multiply the square root of 2 by itself in the denominator, the result was 2, which is now a rational number. Here's the second example, 3 over 2 plus the square root of 2. In this case, we rationalize the denominator by multiplying it by its conjugate. The conjugate of an expression like this one is the same expression, but with a plus sign replaced by a minus sign, or vice versa. Thus, the conjugate of this denominator is 2 minus the square root of 2. When we multiply by the conjugate, the root sign is canceled out. 3 over 2 plus the square root of 2 times 2 minus the square root of 2 over 2 minus the square root of 2, which equals 6 minus 3 times the square root of 2 over 4 minus 2 times the square root of 2 plus 2 times the square root of 2 minus 2, and that equals 6 minus 3 times the square root of 2 over 2. Here are two additional problems involving expressions. Problem. If x does not equal minus 5, which of the following are equivalent to z plus 5 equals x squared minus 25 over x plus 5? z equals x minus 10. z minus 10 equals x. 2z equals 2x minus 5 minus 10. And here are some possible answers. Let's find the solution. x squared minus 25 over x plus 5 equals x plus 5 times x minus 5 over x plus 5, and that equals x minus 5. So z plus 5 equals x minus 5, and z equals x minus 10. This means that choice 1 is equivalent. But if z equals x minus 10, then z plus 10 equals x, so choice number 2, z minus 10 equals x, is false. Therefore, choice 2 is not equivalent. Also, if 2z equals 2x minus 5 minus 10, then 2z equals 2x minus 15. But since z equals x minus 10, then 2z equals 2x minus 20. So that would imply 2x minus 20 equals 2x minus 15. Subtracting 2x from both sides, we get minus 20 equals minus 15, 
which is absurd. And thus choice three is not equivalent either. So the correct answer is A. Problem. If uv equals mn and vw equals nk, then which of the following equalities is valid for all non-zero numbers? And here are some possible answers. Let's find the solution. Let's look at each possible answer. Note that none of these variables can equal zero. Suppose a is true. That is, uw equals nk over v. Since we know that vw equals nk, then it follows that w equals nk over v, which equals uw, that is, uw equals w, which is false, for example, if u is 2. So answer A is invalid. Suppose answer B is true, then m over u equals w over n. We know that uv equals mn, so dividing both sides by un, we get v over n equals m over u. But if answer b is true, then m over u equals w over n. So that implies that w equals v, which is not necessarily true. So answer b is invalid also. Suppose answer c is true, then m over u equals k over w. uv equals mn, means v over n equals m over u. And vw equals nk means v over n equals k over w. And that equals m over u. So m over u equals k over w and answer c is valid. Suppose answer d is true. Then w over n equals k over m. From vw equals nk we get w over n equals k over v. So w over n equals k over m implies m equals v, which is not necessarily true. So answer D is invalid also. Finally, let's suppose answer E is true. Then mu equals vn. This implies m equals vn over u. Substituting this value into uv equals mn, we get uv equals vn squared over u, or u squared equals n squared, which is not necessarily true. Therefore, answer E is also invalid. So the correct answer is C. Notice that we eliminated each incorrect answer by manipulating the answers equation and one or more of the two equations we were given originally. We then compared results. We did the same to determine that answer C was correct. For more practice GMAT problems, see our other videos and go to www.gmatmath.online. And you can get our ebooks GMAT Math Basics, GMAT Math Problem Solving, and GMAT Math Data Sufficiency. Thanks for your interest.